I hope we're all believers. Yayuladina Amanu, to have Iman in Allah. That means to have the correct belief. He's one God, and you do what he wants you to do. All right. He says to these believers, it's been ordered for you. Order. It's booked. You got to do it. Ordered for you is to fast. Like it was ordered for the people before you. And we've talked about that as well. How do other people perceive fasting in general and how do they perceive what we do? Well, that's the purpose of this show, isn't it? To find out what we really believe, what we really do. Not just for you and I as Muslims, even the non-Muslims who are watching us. We want them to know as well. And this is a great month for us because, and look what it says, as it was ordered for the people before you so that you can attain this word called taqwa. What is taqwa? And we've also talked about that in other programs. But simply put, it's a shield against Allah's anger on the day of judgment when you're going to need all the defense you can get. And that's what this taqwa is all about. And a part of that is another word in Arabic, a tawba. This is a great month for tawba. What is tawba? It is to actually go back. Go back. You say, go back? What does that mean? Repent. A person is out doing these actions. Some good actions, some bad, some in between. This is what we do throughout the day. From the time you wake up to the time you go to bed, you're doing something, aren't you? You're doing something. Whether it's a lot of physical stuff, or if it's a lot of mental things, or if it's just creative things, but you're doing something. And those actions, those are the things that all of us, we're going to be asked about those things. Eventually, it's going to come out. And what are we going to do about it? Well, if we waited till it was too late, obviously, there's nothing you can do about it. But while you're still alive, that's the time to do this, to repent. Now, I want to give you a little sense of this word before I go any further. Suppose we find ourselves driving down the street, you know, and we notice all of a sudden, hey, all the cars are coming toward us on both lanes and in front of us, and they're honking. You're like, what's the matter with all these crazy people? What's going on here? All the cars are coming toward me, you know, and I'm driving here. Oh, oh, what's that? It's obvious, isn't it? You're going the wrong way. You're going the wrong way. It's a one-way street going this way, and you're going the wrong way. You must turn back. You must go back. Otherwise, you're going to be on a collision course with your own destiny. Now, I think you get what I'm saying now. And that's the same with Toba. All of us, as we go through life, we're thinking, well, you know, tomorrow. And because we feel like, well, look how old I am now. I'm probably going to live and live and live some more, some more, some more. But we don't know. Nobody knows if he's got a tomorrow coming or not. You don't know that. I don't know that. In fact, the thing that's guaranteed to us in the Quran, the speech of Almighty God, he says clearly his guarantee, his guarantee about your life is, Kulu nafsan daikatamot. That's your guarantee. You're going to die. Every single soul shall taste death. Oops. You're going to die? Yeah. There's no guarantee you're going to live. But there is a guarantee you're going to die. So when shall I make this toba? When shall I turn back? Well, it's real easy to say I'm going to do it tomorrow, next week. I'll get to it later. But look how Ramadan brings this into focus. As soon as we begin fasting, as soon as we start the night before the, the uh, fasting of food and drink, we begin fasting right away of other things too. We immediately start watching our tongue and what we say because we realize this is part of Ramadan. When that sun went down and they spotted the crescent moon, Ramadan started, it's time for me to watch my mouth, what I say. And watch what I do. Don't cheat. Don't steal. Don't hurt people's feelings anymore. And if you've got a big heavy hand out here, you're slapping people around, time to stop that. It's time to stop it because Islam does not authorize anybody to beat other people, ever. And by the way, we have some people trying to 
mistranslate Quran to the English language using these kind of terms. But that's not the focus of this show. But know this, there's nowhere in Islam authorizing a person to oppress another person. In fact, let's make it real clear right here, right now, Islam forbids oppression. Islam forbids oppression. It's called dhulm. In the Arabic language, dhulm is something that is like oppression, wrongdoing. It's really bad. And Allah tells us clearly that he forbids himself to do dhulm. He never does dhulm, and he forbids us to do dhulm. Don't oppress. Don't put down. Because this kind of thing is destruction. Destruction, destruction. Stay away from dhulm. So, sun goes down, crescent moon comes up, immediately we stop what? Dhulm. And then we make tawbah. We repent. And going back to who? Go back to what? Go back to Allah. We say, I'm sorry. Try this. I am sorry. Only now mean it. I'm sorry. Go back to Allah and say, Allah, Almighty God, you created me. You're the one who gave me life. You give me food. You give me breath. And I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. And then what? Don't do it anymore. This month of Ramadan is a chance for us to focus on that repenting and not doing it anymore. Good focus? Well, I'm going to tell you something. For me, when I came into Islam, I realized that this was a great way psychologically to deal with this kind of a problem because many times people will not make the firm commitment of what day they're going to start. But this is my day to start here and now. That's it. From this point forward, I will try my best to do this and I will try my best not to do that. And that's all you need to do. But you needed to have a particular day to start it on. You needed to have a way to get into it. And that's what Ramadan provides for us. It gives us that chance. It gives us that, that a mutual, actually mutual opportunity because other people are doing the same thing. How about this? Here's a great chance to make up between friends. A couple of guys, they're fighting with each other. You know, they used to be friends. And now suddenly, uh, you know, they became arguing, fighting. These are the very things that we're not supposed to do. But how about Ramadan? So make, make up some sweets. Make up a favorite dish of the other person and take it to them and say, you know what, I'm sorry. And if they said, oh, it really wasn't your fault, really, I'm, I'm responsible. No, no, no. Take all the blame yourself, really, and offer the sweets or whatever. Give them something they like. Maybe they like the uh, utter, you know, the fragrance that we have. Maybe they'd like to have that. Maybe they like dates or olives, whatever that you know they like. Take that to them. Maybe they like pizza. Hey, uh, who can say no to a good pizza? And then tell them you're sorry. But above all, be sorry with Allah and ask Allah to forgive you. Even if the person doesn't forgive you, okay, you still forgive them. Because on the day of judgment, Allah, he's going to forgive. He will forgive. And you want to be of those who get forgiven. So forgive others. This is a great month for that for giving out forgiveness and taking back what you said and did. Ask people forgive you and make this toba. Whatever you were doing, whether it was against the law or against the people, this is the great month for toba. And ask Allah to forgive all of us. And by the way, if I said or did anything wrong in any of our programs, I ask Allah to forgive me and I ask you to pray for me that I do better in our other programs. But we have come to the end of this one. So until the next time, for Ramadan in focus, I'm used to Vestas bidding you, sit down, peace. Oh.